It's been a few weeks since we last explored any navigation concept together. So today I'm excited to share a fresh and innovative navigation concept inspired by a recent SOTD from Awards. It's a step up from the navigation styles we've explored before. In this session, we'll be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GreenSock to build this compelling full screen overlay menu. Plus, we'll dive into this mouse move image parallax effect as well, which I have successfully cloned to some extent using GSAP. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Also remember that by signing up for CodeGrip Pro, you not only unlock access to the source code, but also receive monthly website templates. You can find the link in the description. Now let's dive into the code without further ado. Let's start by setting up a container that will hold everything together. We'll need three main parts, the navbar, hero section, and the menu. In the navbar, we'll place a logo using an image and right next to it, some text that will serve as our menu toggle button. Moving on to the hero section, I'll insert a header with some placeholder text. For the menu, we are breaking it down into three segments the menu navbar, menu image container, and the menu items. Inside the image container, we'll add four images. This will be stacked and later animated to create a parallax effect. Remember to give each image a unique ID. The menu items section will be organized into three parts, the menu logo, links and the footer. The menu logo will reuse the same image as in the navbar. Within the link section, I'll add a div with the class menu link containing an anchor tag wrapped in a paragraph. This setup will help us animate the links with GSAP later. I'll replicate this menu link three more times, updating the text for each link accordingly. The menu footer will be split into two columns. Each column will be filled with the dummy text wrapped in divs with the class name menu sub item. After recording this part, I realized I forgot to include the closed text in the menu navbar. Make sure to add that in your menu nav. Alright, that wraps up our HTML structure. Let's move on to the styling part. We'll start by resetting all default margins, paddings, and setting the box sizing to border box. Next, we'll set the width and height for the HTML and body to be 100%, choose the font, and set a dark background color. For all images, they'll cover their containers completely without losing their aspect ratio, thanks to the object fit property. We'll style all paragraph tags with white color, use a different font, make the text uppercase and keep it lightweight. Next, let's style our hero section. We'll set it to cover the full viewport with a background image that fills the entire area ensuring it's centered and scaled perfectly. Inside the hero section, the header is positioned right in the center. We use flexbox to lay out the text elements neatly with just enough space between them. The superscript text gives a slight elevation to some text, white color and relative size. For the main header, the h1 element will be bold and large. It's styled in white with uppercase letters, tight letter spacing, and full line height, making it a focal point of the hero section. Now onto the navigation bar. It's fixed at the top of the screen, designed to stretch across the full width of the viewport and neatly organizes its content with padding for breathing space. In the navigation, we have the logo, which is kept small with fixed width.
both the menu open and close elements are set clickable changing the cursor to a pointer to indicate they are interactive let's style the full screen menu that overlays when activated it's fixed at the top and stretches across the full viewport with a deep background color and white text for contrast it will use flexbox allowing space between items for a clean layout The navigation within the menu is also fixed to the top. It's aligned to the end to position the close menu text. The images within the menu will span a flex width of 3, ensuring that images are always properly displayed without overflow. Lastly, the menu items are organized in a column layout. They are spaced evenly to create a balanced spacing. Next, let's talk about how we style the images in the menu. Each image is positioned absolutely within the container to center them perfectly, giving them appearance of layering. To enhance this effect, we adjust their opacities, creating a depth illusion with the topmost image being the most visible and the bottommost the least. The logo within the menu is given a specific width and is clipped so we can animate logo through it later. Paragraphs within the menu links are styled with the large and bold fonts. Links are styled to have no underline and white text. The footer stretches across the width of the menu and will have a flex layout, allowing us to divide it into two columns equally. Each sub-item within these columns is positioned relatively to align correctly within its container. Both the menu links and these sub-items use a clipping path again so we can animate the text through it. For the mobile devices, we completely hide the image section of the menu. This change ensures that the menu remains functional and visually appealing even on smaller screens. Now let's integrate the interactive functionality using JavaScript. When the page loads, we start by setting up event listeners for when the DOM content is fully loaded. This ensures that our script runs only after the HTML elements are available. We first grab references to our menu open and close buttons. We also declare a variable to track whether the menu is currently open. Next, we use GSAP to set initial positions and properties for various elements like menu logo, links and sub-items. We position some of our images off-screen and behind the clip mask to prepare them for animation. Then we first attach event listeners to both the menu open and close buttons to handle click events. For the menu open button, when clicked, we check if the menu is already open. If it is, we do nothing to avoid triggering the animation again. If it's not open, we call the open menu function to animate the menu into view. Similarly, for the menu close button, when clicked, we check if the menu is closed. If it is, we again do nothing to prevent any unnecessary animation overlap. If the menu is open, we execute the close menu function to hide the menu and return the page to its initial state. Now let's define the open menu function. This function first adjusts the menu's visibility by animating its clip path, making the entire menu visible and interactive. Then 
At the same time, the hero section is moved upwards and faded out to make room for the menu. Each element within the menu, like the menu logo, links, sub items, is then animated into place. The menu logo moves into its final position without any delay, while the paragraphs within the menu links and sub items smoothly transition upwards with slight delays and staggered starts to add a dynamic feel. Additionally, the images in the menu are brought into center with a slight delay, creating a layered visual effect. Once all animations complete, the hero section is reset to its initial position and the menu state is updated to reflect that it is open. Conversely, the close menu function begins by reversing the clip path animation, which hides the menu from view and disables any interactions. It also pushes the menu items downwards while fading them out. The hero section is then brought back to its original position with its opacity restored, signaling that the main page is visible again. After all animations have completed, various elements are reset to their initial states, including the positions of images and text, readying them for the next time the menu is opened. Next, we are enhancing the visual interactivity of our menu images with parallax and tilt effects, which react to the user's mouse movements. First, we start by selecting the container that holds our images and all the individual images within it. We then set up a reference point by calculating the center of the window. This center point helps us determine how far the mouse is from the center, allowing us to calculate the tilt and parallax effect accurately. As the user moves the mouse, we calculate the difference between the mouse's current position and the center of the window. These values, dx and dy, represent the horizontal and vertical distances respectively. Using these distances, we compute the tilt angles for the x and y axis. The menu image container is then rotated slightly based on these tilt calculations, creating a subtle 3D effect that responds as you move your cursor across the screen. Simultaneously, each image is individually adjusted. The images move slightly opposite to the cursor's movement, with this effect increasing subtly with each subsequent image to enhance the depth. This is the parallax effect. Additionally, each image is scaled down progressively, adding to the illusion of depth. The transformations and animations are smoothly handled by GSAP, ensuring that the effects are fluid and responsive. The dynamic interaction not only adds a layer of sophistication to the menu, but also engages users creating a more immersive experience. By tracking the mouse's movement across the entire body of the document, we ensure that the effects are continuous, react instantly, providing immediate feedback to user interactions. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.